Well, hello there, it's Pastor Lance, and we're putting together a series of videos on different ministries that are featured by the community engagement team here at DCC. And today I'm going to be talking with Roger Dixon, and he's going to be talking about Kairos Prison Ministries. And so, hey Roger, how are you doing today? Hi Lance, I'm, I'm great, I'm blessed. Good, Thanks. good. Well, tell me a little bit about Kairos Prison Ministries. Yeah, uh, it's, it's something that maybe a lot of people haven't heard about, but it is an international ministry that uh, kind of started in the Catholic Church and with a, a program called Curseal, which is a lot like uh, the Methodist uh, Walk to Emmaus type program. And somehow that got into a prison mm. and uh, started taking that, that uh, Curseal program to prison and uh, down in Florida. And at some point, they said, you know, it really has to be a separate ministry. And instead of saying non-denominational, I'd say it's multi-denominational. There's uh, volunteers from all kinds of different churches, and we get together for the purpose of uh, taking the gospel inside where it may not otherwise be. But uh, we're in most of the states and about six or seven international countries, so it is a worldwide ministry. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, there's a lot of revival happening in prisons. It, yeah, sure. well, oh, it's it's uh, probably one of the things that has excited me the most is because I've kind of lined my toes up on the chalk when watching the Olympics, you know, and, <laughs> and, and it's just right there on the edge of it and watching it firsthand. It's it's amazing. It's It really is uh, uh, remarkable what God is, is doing inside. Yeah. And how did you get involved in the ministry? Ah, well, we were living in Colorado at the time and uh, had a friend that uh, is my accountability partner and we would ride our bicycles together, uh, commute back and forth to work every week and stop and pray and read scripture and just visit. And uh, he told me he was getting involved with something called Kairos and he'd been involved with it in Texas mm -hmm. when, he was, uh, when he was a young adult and now he felt it was time for him to get back involved and he said, so uh, I'm putting together a team to go, it would be the first time into a certain prison in Colorado, and said, uh, you want to join me? And uh, full of faith, I said, no. <laughs> I said, I don't want to go into no prison. <laughs> and so I passed on the opportunity. Um, and then he had a great weekend, heard some really great stories, and about six months went by, and he said, we're going to go back inside. And I thought, you're really needing volunteers. So you're my friend. I'll do it this one time. So I said, yeah, I'll do, I'll do it. And so uh, that was for me, that was 2017, uh, in the spring of 2017. And uh, the weekend started a little slow for me, I'm going to be honest. But by the time we got to Saturday night and then the closing ceremony on Sunday, it, I, I didn't care what he did. I was I was hooked. This was this was something that was really grabbed my heart. Wow, oh, that's fantastic. What what do you do in the prisons? Uh, a lot of it uh, uh, rotates around a four day weekend. We do twice a year where where a team goes in and we meet for an entire weekend with about uh, thirty five prisoners. And uh, we share them from just talking about choices all the way, talk about the church over, over the whole weekend. Uh, we sing a lot. Uh, we, we interact a lot. Uh, there's a lot of honesty. And some, sometimes it's, ooh, yeah. <laughs> that's a little too honest. But uh, yeah. that's not just what Kairos is about. What we're really trying to do is establish a church. On yeah. the inside. A lot of times, you know, ministry, you know, to think, oh, okay, well, we've got to be back inside. Those, those uh, inmates are going to be wondering where we are. Well, if we've done our job, we've planted the seeds for a church to, to take root and to grow inside. And so when things are up and going, we'll go back between those, those twice a year things. We'll go back for a, a reunion or a, a retreat. Uh, sometimes we get to go back even weekly with something we call prayer and share. But at that point, the inmates themselves are running everything, and we're just there really just to, to facilitate and make it possible for them to meet. So 
everything from weekly to monthly to twice a year, uh, we're, we're try to stay involved with the prisoners for the long haul. Hmm. So you guys are actually establishing a church then inside the prison. That's that's the goal. Yeah, that's our goal. That's that's right. Uh, yeah. It's a, a functioning church that that lives and breathes on the inside, even when we're not there, like in COVID. Uh, yeah. So we haven't been in Clallam Bay, which is the the close by prison that Kairos operates in. We haven't been there for just shy of five years now. Oh wow! So when so. The neck, the prison that's closest to us is the one in Clallam Bay that you go to? Yes, uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. It was funny when we were moving here, I uh, went down to the visitor center and was trying, trying to learn all about SQUIM and everything. And I asked the lady, said, I've got one last question. Is, <laughs> is, is there a prison nearby? And, and she took a couple steps back. But uh, yes, Clallam Bay and Kairos has been involved uh, out in Clallam Bay since 2006. Oh, wow. So they've been going for a long time. Oh, that's great. And do you feel like that there is a pretty warm reception to Kairos in the prisons? Yeah. Now, I've, I've, I've got to put a halt here because my experience is in Colorado. Yeah. And we haven't been, and Vicki and I haven't been here for five years yet. So yeah. other than visiting the administrative parts of the prison there, I've, I've not met any of the inmates there. But from talking to the other volunteers that I work with who've been out there for years, yeah, uh, and that was certainly our experience in, in Colorado, not only by the inmates, uh, in Colorado especially, the, uh, the warden and the staff couldn't oh, yeah. wait for us to come back because they noticed a difference in the atmosphere inside the prison because we were there. Yeah, that's, a, that's really a tremendous impact then that's a po in a positive way that Kairos is having in the prisons that you know, the church being the church and just affecting the mood of the prison and the atmosphere and everything is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. When is the next um, Kairos event? Well, I'm also the, the institutional liaison between Kairos and the prison just simply because how close I live. And we're still trying to get back in from COVID. We were going to be in at the end of July, which would have just have been a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and it doesn't look, just because of the holiday at the end of August, it doesn't look like August is going to happen. So I'm going to probably start looking at uh, probably the fourth Saturday in September. Oh, okay. We'll be back in there. We've got to find those guys that have already, uh, what I would call a Kairos graduate, find those guys and see what their interest. Of course, they move around a lot. Yeah, yeah. And so a lot of the guys that experienced Kairos here may now either be released or they may be in another prison system. On the other side, though, there are people from other prison systems that may have attended Kairos in a prison somewhere else and have come here. So we need, we're need we gonna start out small mm -hmm. and, and start meeting those guys again and gauging, okay, what is our next step? But certainly we're gonna build up, when, when we find our stride, yeah. we're going to, it will be those four day weekends twice a year with all of the events in, in between. But I think we're gonna need to ramp up to yeah. that. How has it how has it strengthened your faith to be involved in the ministry oh, a ministry yeah. like this? Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sit back. I mean, yeah. I, it won't be a long story, but no, that's um, great. I've I've been teaching adult Sunday school classes, f really for forty years, for uh, and and it it seems like you're talking to the same group of Christians every Sunday, you know, with the with the same message, and they know the truth, you know, and and it's soaked into their hearts. Uh, and uh, then I went inside and, and I saw criminals in, in, from Thursday to Sunday have a complete change of heart. Hmm. And that ripped me apart. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the, the, the stories are, are numerous, uh, the things that have happened. It, it's maybe the wrong term, but I'm going to use it anyway. F friendships formed. Uh, of course, I can't, you know, be in constant contact with them. That right. would be against the rules. But uh, some guys that I've really come to know as a Christian brother, even though I know because of what they're wearing, and when I leave they, for the day, they don't. 
I know that there are reasons that they have to stay there. Right. That that they have done, they've made some choices that have landed them in prison. Right. And either for a short time or for a long time, they have to pay that debt. And yet, Jesus Christ transforms those people. And, uh, and, and it's, it's amazing. Yeah. And, and that, that's what has fueled my enthusiasm, is what I've been able to see the Holy Spirit do. Like I said, when my toes right on the chalk line thinking, oh, Okay, Kairos is going to go in there. Okay, God, we've got this. You know, don't worry about the prison. And we get in there and we, we say, uh, God says, okay, you guys can stand here. Watch what I've been doing and watch what I'm going to do. Yeah. And it's, it's amazing. It is absolutely a game changer. Yeah, I think it's just, you know, we see the miracle of the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. But mm -hmm. in a ministry like that, you really see the resurrection of the spirit. Yeah. You know, from death to life, which is a miracle. Oh, yeah. You know, a lot of people say, well, I've never seen a miracle. And I always ask them, well, <laughs> have you ever seen somebody's life changed by Jesus? Because uh -huh. that's a miracle. Oh, it is. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Jesus doesn't turn water into wine. Oh, no. Well, I've seen him turn wine into rent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, for instance, or, or, or wine into food. Uh, yeah, he, he does. He yeah. changes Absolutely. lives. Absolutely. And it's great to see, yeah. if, especially if you don't think, if you're so close so intertwined with with your group inside a church that you never get out and see what God is doing in other places. Yeah, it's great. That's awesome. It yeah. is awesome. So if somebody wanted to get involved with the ministry, how would they how would they go about that? Well, find me. I'm the okay. tall guy. Yes. I'm the tall guy. Tackle me. Yes. And and tell me and say tell me more about about the the prison uh, because it is where it's it's almost the genesis. Like I said, we've been out there since 2006. But COVID, it's like, boom, we're yeah. starting over. So if, if you want a ground floor opportunity, you know, find me. The, the community engagement team uh, would be another place. But at some point, they'll put you in contact with me and, and hold on because I'm, I'm enthusiastic about uh, the yeah. prison ministry. Well, the enthusiasm is really contagious. I know, yeah. you know, I want to go out there just talking to you now. I want to go out there and see what it's all about. For our, sure. Our team always has uh, has clergy on it as well, which is an yeah. important role, yeah. Lance, because sometimes those guys uh, want to talk about the things that landed them there. Yeah, absolutely. and they want to do it in in confidence. Yeah, and that's where the clergy comes in because they can have those confidential uh, uh, conversations. But yeah. if they told me. Again, part of the rules, I have to turn right around and say, okay, I've just learned this. Yeah. So. Well, it's just a great opportunity <laughs> to love on people and to see their lives changed and, you know, to bring hope. It, it's funny. We, we have just a, a little saying in, in Kairos, uh, and it's about our ministry. Listen, listen, love, love. Yeah. And so it's listen and then listen. Yeah. Receive that love and then share the love. So listen, yeah. listen, love, love. Yeah. Well, man, I'm really glad that you came in today to talk to us about the ministry. And it's very exciting yeah. to see what God is doing there. And um, I thank you for the opportunity. This has been great. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, if you want to find out more about the, the ministry, you, like Roger said, you can get in touch with Roger Dixon. His information is in CCB. And you can get in touch with the church office and anybody on the community engagement team or, or myself as well. And so we want to get some volunteers to, to go out there and really see firsthand how these lives are changed. So thanks for spending some time with me today, Roger. Thank you, Lance. Sure appreciate you, brother. <laughs> me too. It's Thank really you. great. Yeah. Hmm. That's cool, man. Hmm. That's really cool. I want to go out. Yeah, I want to go out there at this next event. I want to sure. I want to take you. Yeah, I want to <laughs> go because it's, it's so cool.